How are you guys doing? It is Friday, October 2nd, 2020, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to take you through the Elite matchups and the Elite performances of yes of yesterday, um, Thursday, October 1st, and I'm just going to help and uh, introduce the games today that I think are going to be notable to watch, especially coming up. So first, starting off in the NFL, it was the first game of week four. This one was, took place between the Denver Broncos and the New York Jets, and it would be kind of a close game. But but at the very end, it will be Denver pulling away with it. They put a they they were down by one at one point. Um, McManus was able to get a field goal for them to go up by two, and then Melvin Gordon had a forty three yard touchdown run with less than two minutes left to ice the game for the Denver Broncos. And with this win. Jumping into how both teams performed, starting off with the New York Jets, Sam Darnold would complete 23 of his 42 passes for 230 yards on the day. He'd also run for 84 yards. His only touchdown on the day would be on the ground. Jamison Crowder would be the leading receiver for the Jets as he finished with 104 yards on seven receptions. On the defensive side of the ball, Neville Hewitt led the team in tackles. Um, and Pierre Desir would have two interceptions, one of them being for a touchdown for the Jets. Looking at how the Denver Broncos fared, Brett Ripien was their starting quarterback. He completed 19 of his 31 passes, throwing for 242 yards, two touchdowns, and three picks on the day. Um, the leading rush on the day would be Melvin Gordon the third. He finished with 107 yards and 23 carries and two touchdowns on the day. Um, and then he'd also have 11 yards through the air to give him about, what, 118 yards in total and two touchdowns. Tim Patrick will be the leading receiver for the Denver Broncos. He finished with 113 yards and six receptions and a touchdown. Uh, looking at the defensive side of the ball for the Denver Broncos, Josie Jewell would finish with 10 tackles and two sacks. And Bradley Chubb, their young defensive end, would finish with two and a half sacks on the day as well. Um, and with this win, the Denver Broncos are now 1-3. And, and with this loss, the Ju- the New York Jets are now 0-4. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if their head coach gets fired today. Um, continuing on and looking out into the WNBA just to give you a sense of what's going on out there in that bubble. Um, it'll be ga- Game 1 of the WNBA Finals will be tonight between the Seattle Storm and the Las Vegas Aces um, on ESPN2. Brianna Stewart in the Seattle, in, or in the Seattle Storm are looking to kind of take this one from Aja Wilson and the Las Vegas Aces. A matchup between the WNBA's two most recent MVPs. Um, continuing on, looking out to what's going on in soccer, especially with because yes, uh, following yesterday's Thursday games, um, starting in La Liga, Barcelona was able to be Celta Vigo three nothing. Anzu Fati, um, Barcelona's teenage young like prodigy, he already has three goals on the season. And he's getting off to an amazing start. And I think he's really starting to fit in with his offense. Going out to the Carabao Cup, Liverpool and Arsenal will go to penalty kicks. But Arsenal would advance 5-4 to four on penalties, officially um, eliminating Liverpool from that. Um, and then continuing to look out and uh, to look, to, look forward to today's matchups on Friday. Um, PSG is going to take on Angers. And Ligon at three o'clock today, and that's really the only big game to look out for in terms of um, in terms of soccer. And last but not least, looking out into playoff baseball, it was the third day of wild card action. Um, some teams had already clinched. There was only one AL matchup that took place yesterday, and that was between the Oakland Athletics and the Chicago White Sox in this series. Um, and in this game, the Oakland Athletics would end up beating the Chicago White Sox six to four. And then the two seed Oakland Athletics would go on to advance to play against the Houston Astros, who are the sixth seed in the American League. But looking into the game for the Chicago White Sox, Dunning would get the start. No, none of their pitchers would pitch more than two innings. I'm talking about the Chicago White Sox. On the offensive side of the ball, their shortstop, Tim Anderson, will go three for five. Um, their center fielder, Luis Robert, will go two for five with two RBIs and two runs. He had his first home run, of the his only home run of the playoffs. Um, and then their right fielder, um, Nomar Masada, he'd finish two for four with two RBIs. Looking at how Oakland did, Fires would get the start, but just like um, Chicago, it ended up being a bullpen matchup where none of their pitchers would pitch more than two innings. Frankie Montaz would eventually get the win as he pitched two innings. Um, of relief. Looking at how Oakland did, their second baseman, Tommy LaSella, would go one for three with two runs on the day. Um, their shortstop, Marcus Simeon, would go two for four with a run. Their pinch hitting third baseman, um, Chad Pinder, would go two for three with two RBIs on the day. 
Um, and then continuing on there, catcher Sean Murphy would go one for two with two RBIs and two runs. He had his first home run of the playoffs. And like I said, after winning the series in three, the only AL wild card series game to go to three, they will face off against the Houston Astros in the next round. So jumping out to the National League, because of course, all of their game twos were being played yesterday as well, um, except for the Marlins and the Cubs, because they will... I don't know. Their game got delayed, but they will. Their game two will happen today at two oh eight. As Sixto Sanchez is going to take on Yu Darvish. Yu Darvish, one of the league's best pitchers, and Sixto Sanchez, one of the league's best young pitchers. Um, and considering the Cubs are no, their their backs are against the wall. They really have to fight this one out. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Jumping into the games that actually play it though, um, the Atlanta Braves. Are gonna take on the since they took on the Cincinnati Reds last night. We're able to completely shut them out five to nothing. Luis Castillo would pick up the loss for the Cincinnati Reds as he allowed one earned run in five point one innings pitch, striking out seven batters on the day. Um, offensively for the Reds, no one on their team was able to get. I mean, there were only two hits were allowed. Eugenio Suarez and Freddie Galvis were the only two players to register a hit. As for the Atlanta Braves, Ian Anderson tossed a gem. Their young rookie pitcher would allow no earned runs in six innings pitch striking out nine batters on the day. Their elite center fielder, Ronald Acuna Jr., would go three for five with an RBI. Their elite first baseman, Freddie Freeman, would go 0 for two with a run. Their designated hitter, Marcelo Zuna, would go one for four with two RBIs and a run as he had his first home run at the playoffs. Their elite second baseman, Ozzy Albies, would go one for three with a run. Their left fielder, Adam Duvall, would go one for four with two RBIs and a run as he, also, as he had his first home run at the playoffs. And with this, the Atlanta Braves will go on. Not, not only did they sweep the Cincinnati Reds, they held the Cincinnati Reds scoreless for the for the. I mean, it's a two game series, but they held them scoreless for the entire series. I imagine that has not probably has not been done in at least modern baseball history. Um, but with this win, they will go in advance and they will take on the winner of the Marlins and Cubs series. But the Braves, after not allowing a single run in two games, I that they have to be feeling really well. So and then jumping out to the last two series, jumping out to San Diego. Um, in this in game two, the San Diego Padres would beat the Cardinals eleven to nine yesterday. Looking at how the Cardinals did, Adam Wainwright would get the start. He would allow or he would allow two earned runs and in three innings pitch, striking out three. It was mostly a bullpen outing from the Cardinals. Their second baseman, Colton Wong, would go one for four with four RBIs and a run. Um, as he hit uh no, as he hit his First home of the playoffs in the second inning for the Cardinals. Um, their elite first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt, would go two for five with an RBI and a run as he had his second home run of the playoffs. Um, St. Louis Hall of future Hall of Fame catcher Yadier Molina will go two for five with an RBI. Their designated hitter, Matt Carpenter, will go one for three with three runs on the day. And their right fielder, well, their right fielder, Dexter Fowler, will go two for five with an RBI and a run. And their center fielder, Harrison Bader, will go one for three with two RBIs and a run. Looking out to the San Diego Padres, Zach Davies will get the start, but he'd only pitch two innings. He allowed four earned runs in those two innings, striking out three. Um, Fernando Tatis Jr., the San Diego Padres elite shortstop, will go three for five with five RBIs and two runs. Their elite third baseman, Manny Machado, will go one for five with an RBI and a run. Fernando Tatis would hit two home runs in the game, and Machado would hit his first of the playoffs. Um, additionally, Tommy Pham, their left fielder, would go four for five. Their designated or their designated hitter, um, pinch hitter, Jerickson Profar, would go two for three with a run on the day. The right fielder, Will Myers, would go two for five with four RBIs and two runs as he also hit two home runs in the game. This is the first time since Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in 1932 that two players have hit two home runs in the same game, in the same playoff game. Um, and then also Jay Cronin, where their second baseman, would go one for two with an RBI and a run. Um, and then with this win, the series is currently tied, and their game three is going to take place today at 7.08. Um, the announced starter is going to be Jack Flaherty for the Cardinals, but the Padres have not officially announced their starter as of yet. And the winner of their series is going to play against the Dodgers after the Dodgers blank the Brewers 3-0. Um, for, the, for the Milwaukee Brewers, it will be Brandon Woodruff who got the start. Um, and in the start, he would allow three earned runs and 4.2 innings pitch, striking out nine batters. Hader would pitch one inning of relief. He would allow no earned runs, but it just wasn't enough. For the Brewers, offensively, they, they were only able to get four hits as a team. Um, their elite left fielder, Christian Yelich, would go 0 for 4 with two strikeouts on the day. Looking at how the Dodgers fared, their GOAT-level pitcher, starting pitcher Clayton Kershaw, would allow no earned runs in eight innings pitch, striking out 13 batters on the day. 
Um, their elite right fielder, Mookie Betts, would go one for three with two RBIs on the day. Their elite center fielder, Cody Bellinger, would go one for three. Their second baseman, Chris Taylor, would go two for three with a run on the day. And then their catcher, Austin Barnes, would go two for three with an RBI and a run. With this win, like I said, the Dodgers will advance to play against the winner of the Cardinals and the Padres. And once the final series are played, the American League Division Series will start next Monday, October 5th. Or they'll start this upcoming Monday on October 5th as the Astros take on the A's and the Yankees take on the Rays um, as they are starting to transition to their different bubbles. And with that said, I really appreciate you for listening to all 10 and a half minutes of this piece. Um, once again, it is Friday, October 2nd, 2020 out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims and thanks once again for hearing my piece and peace out.